Hey folks, hope you all are doing well. I am Karan Bandal from e-commerce site. And in this video, we will look at the fiscal deficits of the US government and the status of the US dollar as a global reserve currency. Let's start with what exactly is fiscal deficit. It is a shortfall in government's revenue or income compared with its spending. A government that spends beyond its means has a fiscal deficit on the flip side. A government that spends less than what it brings in ends up with a fiscal surplus. Pretty rare these days to find such prudent national governments that have a budget surplus or at the very least run a balanced budget. Now in recent history, US has been consistently running fiscal deficits since 2002. A strong economy usually reduces the deficit, but not this time. See, US had an average growth rate of around 2% since the year 2000 up until 2019. That is, pre-COVID average growth rate for the United States was around 2%. Then the economy took quite a hit during the COVID outbreak that began in early 2020, followed by lockdowns and restrictions. Once the nation started opening back up, economy recovered quite ecstatically, hitting almost 6% growth rate in 2021 before moderating to 2% the following year. With this strong recovery, employment picture also improved substantially. The US unemployment rate plummeted from a peak of 14.7% in April 2020 to a multi-year low of 3.5% by the end of 2022. Clearly, US economy with a robust growth rate and a strong labor market is doing quite well. But then what about the deficit? Should it not be going down? Instead, this year the deficit is expected to double. For context, let's go back to COVID years. The US government spent a record amount to combat the impact of COVID-19 in 2020 and 21. As a result, the fiscal deficit jumped to almost $3 trillion both in 2020 and 21. Think about that for a moment. Size of India's economy is around $3.5 trillion in 2023 and the amount the US government spent in excess of its income is only slightly less than the size of India's entire economy. This fiscal deficit dropped to a third that is a little below $1 trillion in 2022 and now is shooting back up again. This is confounding many economists' expectations. Typically, deficits contract when the economy grows because businesses and consumers owe more in taxes and the government does not need to spend as much to protect those who have lost their jobs. Then deficits normally expand again in downturns as those factors go into reverse. And yet, the current surge in deficit is coinciding with the period of unusually strong economic growth amid historic lows in unemployment and robust corporate profits. One would argue that we cannot look at the fiscal deficit as an absolute number, and yes, that is correct. A well-rounded way to view a nation's fiscal deficit is to look at it as a percentage of that nation's GDP. Let's take India and the United States for example. In 2022, US ran a fiscal deficit of around $1 trillion, whereas India ran a fiscal deficit of only about $200 billion. Clearly, India did better, right? As it turns out, US did a whole 240 basis points better than India at managing its state finances that year. Bigger economies can tolerate bigger deficits, and the same is true for the national debt. So for the United States, even the fiscal deficit as a share of its GDP is doubling this year compared to the last. There is a two-part explanation that experts provide for this trend. First, the government is on track to take in substantially less in new revenue this year, in part because of the stock market slump last year. This will lead to a sharp drop in capital gains tax revenue. Then, US experienced a 40-year high inflation in 2022. Automatic adjustments to the tax brackets to account for this inflation spike also reduced tax obligations for many Americans. As a result, government's income is going to be lower this year than what it was last year. Second, several other spending increases have materialized. Social security payments increased because they are indexed to inflation. The government spent more on education, veterans benefits and healthcare. 
Add to that the bipartisan infrastructure law as well as the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act began sending billions of dollars out from the government accounts. Finally, with the Federal Reserve raising benchmark interest rates aggressively, the interest expense on government's debt has also begun to spike as a share of the nation's GDP. Put it all together and you have a situation where the government's income is going down and expense is rising, naturally leading to a jump in fiscal deficit. Be that as it may, if the US government is going to spend $2 trillion more than what it brings in this year, they'll have to borrow the difference. On the other side of that equation, there needs to be someone willing to lend to the US government and that too at a reasonable price. This is where the United States stands taller than almost everyone else. There is no dearth of entities willing to lend to the US government. You lend money to US government when you buy their government bonds or US treasury bills or T-bills. US T-bills are considered one of the safest asset classes globally. Wealthy US citizens have a significant exposure to T-bills, even wealthy non-US citizens. Rich Russians, Chinese, Indians, etc. prefer to keep some of their wealth in T-bills. Not only that, foreign governments, as they build and maintain their foreign exchange reserves, a large chunk of the reserves is kept in the form of US dollar denominated assets and specifically T-bills. Despite the recent talk of de-dollarization, the US dollar remains dominant. In fact, since 2012, the dollar has only gained in importance. The dollar is up 13% in international SWIFT payments. Dollar still makes up 59% of the forex reserves of other nations, despite dropping only marginally. And in forex transaction volume, there is no competition, as dollar completely dominates with almost a 90% share. Point being, US dollar is still highly desired in global markets. US T-bills, therefore, are unlikely to go unsold at an auction and thus, as I said, there's no dearth of entities willing to lend to the US government. The special status of the US dollar allows the government to run these large deficits. So the good news for America, the US dollar is still the king and will remain so at least in the medium term. On the other hand, US deficits are trending up and with it the total national debt. US debt has already reached $32 trillion or roughly 120% of the GDP. Still not alarming, but policymakers need to take note that the debt is growing faster than the economy, which, if left unchecked, may begin to harm the special status of the US dollar. I hope you found this analysis interesting. I'll speak with you again next week. Until then, take care.